thrust bearing. This particular thrust bearing is an FAG. It's a ball retaining thrust bearing. It has air gap between the inner race, the retainer, and the outer race. That allows for oil flow to pass through between the balls and the inner race right here. It's a very good bearing to allow stacking. So you can stack one bearing on top of the next bearing and get oil to flow very positive through both sides of the race and the outer race. I'm going to show you next a spherical roller. This is a little bit heavy, so bear with me here. This particular bearing is an FAG. It's a 29430E FAG. It's a steel retainer. It's a very heavy duty bearing. Speed range on this particular bearing is around 1350 RPM. If we buy what's called an FAG E1, we can get that speed range up because it's an extra capacity bearing. It allows us to take it up to around 1950 to 2000 RPM. So if you're trying to match a bearing to the RPM of the motor, the E1 gets it as close as you can get. The SKF Explorer is the next bearing that will try to get you close to that, but it's less speed range. It's around 1900. Any of the other bearings are all below it. And when I say that, if you go to your bearing books, you'd be able to either print out or see. This yellow area right here is showing 1,990 RPM for a 29434E1. When you're looking at different manufacturers, to give you a good example, this is an FAG that is not an E1. In the yellow area, right down here, this FAG is a 1300 RPM bearing. So the E1 takes it past 1300 all the way to 1990 to 2000. The same bearing in a brand new Koyo book. This book has been given to us just yesterday. The Koyo bearing is 950 RPM. So you get a good idea of what's going to happen if you put it in an 1800 RPM motor. Okay. These are two thrust bearings that have been dismantled. You can see. And basically what I want to do is show the importance of when you're disassembling how to draw a picture or take a photo showing how they were originally put together when you disassembled the motor. So let's say we put the two bearings, as you can see the two narrow parts of the bearing, and we put those together like so. That is face to face. So once again, we have the two narrow parts going together face to face. Now a good way to do it so that you don't get in trouble is to lay the mount on a table and have the bearings beside the mount just like this and have the mount sitting in front of it and take a photo of that showing the two bearings and the way they came off. You can't go wrong. Now if we turn the two bearings to the two wide spots on the back where the actual thrust is supported and we put them together that's a back-to-back -back configuration. This configuration, you can take a picture because you have your, th your thin side on this end, you have your thin side on this end. So you can actually see no matter how. And once again, if you put your bearing mount there and you take a photo from the side, you can see this on both sides of it. And you can take several pictures and you'll never have a problem installing the bearings back together. So we've done face-to-face, -face, we've done back-to-back, when we turn the two so that the thin side is to the fat side, so we have that and that, these are both thrust in tandem. So it could be both thrust down or thrust up. So once again, showing a photo that shows the back and the front alongside of the mount would show us that these are both in tandem 
one direction or the other. There is a chance that you could have three bearings, one of them for up thrust. You could have two of them for down thrust. With the bearing mount in the picture, and this being the top of the bearing mount, you would be able to see all three of your bearings, show a little distance even if you want to like this, and you have no problem reassembling the motor with anybody that's taken over after you. Okay, just a quick summary again. We have our back-to-back -back configuration, where they are back-to-back -back in this size. You can see narrow, you can see narrow. We're gonna turn. We are now both in tandem. We have a narrow side on one side. We have a wide side on the other. Both are in tandem, sharing the same load. We turn this two thin sections Put them together, we're face-to-face -face configuration. And that should summarize exactly how you can ensure that you don't have a problem with reinstalling them because somebody didn't mark down how they were. Taking photos is probably the best scenario alongside of the mount. And I don't think anybody would have any problems. If you have a snap ring, even at the end of the, of the bearings on the mount, you could include that. Uh, it'll save a lot of grief. Thank you.